Hey guys, and welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. I'm Tom Whiteman, and today I'm gonna to show you three things that I've never seen before. It's not that they're that rare, but because I've never seen them before and they all came in this week, I just thought I'd show each one of them to you. Here's number one. This is a uh, air rifle made in England, Birmingham, England. I'm gonna, it was actually made pre-World War II, 20s or 30s, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. Also, number two, I have a, a, a conversion kit. Now I've had conversion kits before, but nothing like this. I wanna uh, have you check this out because it's really cool. It, it works for both a K98 and a Luger, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. In fact, the air rifle and this, I'm gonna pull an Ian on you, uh, which just means I'm gonna actually use these. I, you know, People say, I like Ian better because he actually shoots the guns. Well, I'm gonna shoot these. Uh, so you wanna stay tuned for that. The third item, this is uh, incredible. Uh, the, the War in the West, and it's uh, 3D glasses along with a lot of pictures uh, that are in 3D. So I want to go over that with you, probably put out by the propaganda ministry to get young, young boys to sign up to uh, join the fight. So let's do the air rifle first. So this uh, strange looking beast uh, just looks like a regular rifle, but it is a, an air rifle. It has a pneumatic pump, meaning it's uh, air pressure. Most of you have seen air rifles. Uh, what was incredible about this, it's in great condition. And when I looked it up, it does. It was made in either the 20s or 30s. When I saw the BSA, you can see that on the uh, logo here, BSA, Birmingham Small Arms. I thought, oh, I didn't know Birmingham, Alabama had an arms company. Uh, it shows how egocentric uh, us uh, Americans can be. Um, but this is Birmingham, England. So when I looked it up, actually um, air rifles are known to exist all the way back into the 1500s. Um, and in the 1920s and 30s, they were actually very popular in England. Maybe that's because England can't own any guns now. Um, I'm not even sure if this is legal in England anymore. Uh, some of you Brits out there, uh, you know, certainly comment and let me know if this is uh, allowable uh, to have an air gun. Um, but back in the 20s, they actually had uh, clubs where they would have air rifle competitions. And they said there were over 2,000 clubs in, uh, in the United Kingdom where people competed. It was also a favorite of poachers, which makes sense. Um, you can go out into private lands uh, where there's no hunting allowed, um, and you can uh, get small game and birds uh, with this rifle. It's pretty powerful. I hear pretty accurate, up to about 50 yards away. Um, and I'm actually gonna shoot it for you. Uh, the action is pretty simple. You just put a 20, it's a 22 pellet, which I believe they still make. Uh, well, actually you open it up, drop the pellet inside, close it down, and then you pump it, which you've all probably seen before. Pretty strong. Pop it back, aim and pull the trigger. So before I try this out, let's uh, take a look at some of the features. Uh, it is serial numbered in several places and all matching. So uh, there's 50,000 of these, uh, at least 50,000 of these made because this is in that uh, serial range. You can see the logo on the top uh, where it was made. And uh, on the bottom, you can see the spring, how heavy that spring is. And so it, 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 pumps, it uh, pumps the air pressure into there where it holds. And the seals are the most important part from what I understand. When these get old, fragile, and begin to crack and break, then it will no longer hold the seal. Uh, it's important not to pump it up and then uh, store it that way because obviously that puts pressure on the seals. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger because I just pumped it up for you. And uh, that, that releases it. It's also adjustable. You can, you can uh, set the air pressure higher or lower uh, by adjusting uh, the, the, the screw. Uh, here you can see their trademark logo. So for the British, they made a lot of other arms, but as far as I know, they didn't have any military contracts. So it was basically a commercial gun. They did very well for a period of time with air rifles. But, you know, even in the United States, air rifles were uh, very popular. As a matter of fact, here in the U.S., uh, one of the favorite Christmas stories is a Christmas story about a guy who gets a pellet gun and they say, you could take somebody's eye out, which is true. And I'm very curious, please, if you're in England, tell me, are these still legal? Now I did hear a news story where they're gonna ban knives over there so that from now on, when you go out to dinner, you have to use plastic because you could use it to, okay, I'm just messing with you. Um, let me know if these are still legal. I am gonna put it on the website, uh, put it on there today. Uh, and if you'd like to purchase it, take a look. This, this one is, uh, is actually pretty rare and um, there's a lot of other air pistols that you can get for a lot cheaper. 
So let's get started with this rifle. Oh, I forgot to forgot to mention the the MG34 with the aircraft sight. Uh, this actually sold off the site. It is uh, semi-automatic and sold, uh, and we're sending it out today. Uh, so you know, just something that's laying around the office here. Um, maybe more powerful than the air rifle. We'll check it out. Now I am going to put on safety goggles, glasses, but look where they came from. Yeah, gunbroker.com. They sent these to me. Uh, so I wear the goggles for safety. I'm going to have everybody leave the room because of ricochets. I can't really go outside because we live in a uh, fairly urban area. And if somebody sees me walk outside with this, they definitely are going to call the police. So let's uh, load this up and try it out. Okay, there's the cl close up. I open that up, drop the pellet. It's supposed to be a 22 caliber pellet. Just drop it down in there. Um, honestly, it, it could hold more than one. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm just going to do one at a time for safety reasons because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, then you pump it. Took a little bit of strength. I need to work out. And I'm going to shoot. Uh, you see that it's actually a box with a small target. Um, that's, I'd say that's about 15 yards away. Okay, the sights are actually adjustable. Um, not a big deal, but I think these are pretty accurate. Let's try it out. It um, has very little, no kick and very little sound to it at all. Uh, but let's see how we did. So if you count the lines, I at least got one point. Not too bad from 15 yards. So I don't know about killing birds and squirrels, but uh, it's a neat little air rifle. So next is the conversion kit. It's a 22 caliber conversion kit. And I said before that I've only seen one of these and that air pistol, I, I may not have been doing it right. Those of you who want to correct me, that's fine because I'm not doing a lot of research. Don't you like the background? I love the background, but I didn't do a lot of research. I know a little bit of German and this is something about uh, make, making you a, a master. So it, you learn how to shoot. It's a conversion kit so you can learn how to shoot and aim. Um, and it says learn shooting with a universal something, uh, maybe apparatus. Um, and this is the, the maker and uh, the person's name. Uh, now this is an adapter for a Luger. I recognize that. And that happens to be this piece right here. Uh, we're going to try that out. Um, uh, but this is kind of elaborate. And again, I've seen other conversion kits. I know Walder uh, had some conversion kits to make a, a 32 caliber into a 22 caliber pellet. Um, but these um, 22 caliber pellets, similar to the air rifle, they're small pellets. And then these are the, the charred, the uh, primer. So um, we're going to uh, try this out for the first time live and on camera. So Let's do that. But I wanted to show you, you can see somebody use this. You can see the impact that the, uh, the pellets made. I don't want to call them bullets. Uh, the pellets made it also, they had these targets. They had these manuals to how to set the whole thing up. I can't swear that I'm getting it right, but I'm doing, <laughs> doing the best I can. You can see here that they have extra targets that you shoot and look how cool this is. This goes back about 20 yards and I guess you pull it up and shoot, and that's kind of maybe having a shooting competition. It's kind of an early video game, really. Um, so they would shoot this box. I am not going to shoot this box because we are offering it for sale. In fact, if you go to Gunbroker, it's listed right there. We listed it at a dollar. We'll see where the auction takes it. I have no idea what it's worth, um, but we thought we'd uh, put it there and see what it's worth, let the market decide. So uh, one thing I learned was in, in the picture, again, since I don't read German, I'm trying to, f that, this, this Luger, I can tell by the barrel, is clearly a 30 caliber, not a nine millimeter. And so I, I took a nine millimeter, this is a nine millimeter Luger, and it does not fit. This piece doesn't hook up. So I did find, I did find a 30 caliber American Eagle Luger, DWM, 30 caliber. So, this fits perfectly. It goes in, you turn it. It has a little bit of play, which makes me nervous. Um, doesn't help to lock it down. It still has some play to it. And then theoretically, I'm gonna take this, put a pellet in this end, which it doesn't quite fit. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tight fit, but that's the same is true with bullets. It's a tight fit here too. So I have no idea how that's going to make it through there. 
and not come back and take my eye out. So I'm not going to put a pellet in there. Um, just It just scares me too much. But this is fairly simple. Put the primer into the bullet. Pops right in. Fits perfectly. Then we did check this, make sure it's not loaded. Again, safety. We pulled the toggle back. Drop this in. There's the primer. Drop this in. We did check, make sure there's nothing in there. When I drop it down, we hope it doesn't go off. Didn't. So the question is, if I pull the trigger, does it set off the primer? So for safety, again, there's no pellet in there. I'm going to go put my glasses on. So uh, we know that nothing's in there other than a primer, um, but live on camera, I'm going to try shooting this. There's no reason to aim because it's not going anywhere. By the way, it's an 06. If you watch my video, 06 has a thumb uh, grip safety. And let's try it out. <laughs> that, that gives you an idea. You saw the smoke. That's an idea of how powerful uh, this pellet would be. A lot more powerful than an air pellet. Certainly you can see how the case would be marked up like that. Yeah, you can see the strike, it actually uh, dead center. And then this little punch, which is one of the tools, it just pops out with this little punch. There it goes, popped right out. So there, there you go again. But again, the pellet would go there. I'm not trying it with the pellet, it just makes me a little too nervous. If you wanna buy it and try it for yourself, go right ahead. Uh, before I put this away and go on to the next thing, from what we can tell from the pictures, um, this goes with the rifle and you can use the same, uh, they have different caliber um, bullet sizes. So you could use the same thing with a K98, evidently it's, uh, it's universal. So it does work with a rifle or with a Luger, but it seems like it only fits a 30 caliber Luger. So if you wanted to try it out, um, this is a, a very cool item. So somebody brought this in, um, the War in the West. So it's the, basically the Western Front. Nice uh, bound book in excellent condition. When I opened it up, the first thing you notice is these glasses, which I recognized as 3D glasses. Now my grandmother, I used to visit my grandma in Indiana, and she had a much more elaborate, uh, it, it had a wooden handle and you would look through it and it would be encased uh, so it was all dark. And when you looked into it, you could see 3D images. Now she had things like the Grand Canyon and flowers and birds. And I used to just spend hours here. Here you see the maker. Um, and these have uh, fogged up a little bit. But here's how it worked. If you haven't seen this before, if you ever go to a 3D movie and you don't have the right glasses, you know how it's blurred. Well, what they did is they, they gave you double images. And when you put them in there, they become 3D. So they're all war shots. Yeah, there's an anti-tank gun. Uh, yeah, look at that. There's the MG34 right next to a real one. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to put that one in here. But before I do that, then you have the book, which just has color pages. Uh, just cool sh shots of soldiers having a great time. Like, to, uh, see the world. Shoot an anti-aircraft gun. Um, and basically, this was a propaganda tool that I, I'm, I'm sure the uh, Hitler Youth uh, kids would, would get these. And it's just to get them ready to join up and join the, ba uh, join the battle. Um, so all you know, great color shots of German soldiers in war. But of course, no death and destruction. Um, again, it's a propaganda tool. Uh, we know that Goebbels... Uh, was in charge of the propaganda ministry. I did a whole video on propaganda ministry. You can check that one out. Uh, great looking horse. And in the back then, there's even more. So you see all of these images. Oh, here's a soldier run uh, with a gas mask on. And that looks like a uh, naval vessel firing one of their artillery. Oh, they even got a, they even got a German shepherd in that image. Oh, there's a uh, armored vehicle of some kind. This is all again, I've never seen one of these before. I've seen plenty of propaganda books, but nothing that had these 3D glasses with it. So I don't think you get a, a, 
a good idea of the 3D, but you'll have to take my word for it when I tell you that it's it's spectacular. So, <laughs> that is so cool. You know what? I see his bayonet, and I see a pouch right here that looks like a grenade launcher. I've sold those before, and a mess kit. So let's try it out, see what you can get. You're not gonna be able to see it in 3D because it requires the double image, but you'll take my word for it. It comes out in 3D, and it's actually a, a pretty cool effect. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's not as good as my grandmother's. Um, of course, that was in the 50s, and um, hers was much more expensive, but this was, this is more uh, for a kid to just kind of go through the book and see really cool pictures of soldiers. And at age eight, they wanted to join up. Yeah, this one's kind of cool because they're in the, they're walking across the water. You see a couple K-98s and I think I see another uh, machine gun and the guy in the forefront is carrying a, uh, a uh, grenade. And uh, in 3D, you get, the water's like splashing up and uh, going to hit you. So people tell me all the time, you have the greatest job in the world. And truly, uh, those are just three things that came in this week, things that I never saw before. Now, I know I, I didn't get everything exactly right because I didn't do a lot of research. I wanted to show them to you before we sell them, uh, but they will be available. The 3D glasses, we'll probably put that on the website. Check it out if you'd be interested. Um, I just think they're really cool things, and I may never see them again. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I do another video.